Hmm, get a tragic here and welcome back to Wrath of the Righteous. We are heading off to do the next quest, which is the Wardstone Patrol. So we've done into we're up to the halfway through, well, we're in the third into the world wound adventure. This is the Wardstone Patrol. Now what we're going to do is just grab our characters that we've been saving. Uh, yoink. And we're going to play them in the same order rather than playing them randomly. So we're going to put Anora down here. We're going to put Sheila up here. We're going to put Crow here. We're going to put Alan here. We're going to put Kyra down here. And we're going to put... Oh, there's a die in there for some reason. And we're going to put Adwin over here. Okay, now remember, we are playing with the full expansion pack. We are also playing with all the... All the uh, boon promos. We're playing with the uh, iconic hero stuff. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take out this Iconic Hero one because she has her own... She has actually a cohort version of this card and I just don't like having two of those cards in there. And we're also going to be playing with the... Uh, oh, did I already do the boons? Uh, wait. Oh, here we are. They, they, they come out of the green box. That's right. And we're doing the boons as well. Okay. So we'll just get rid of them. Yoink. So we've got our pool set up. We can now grab our decks. Now there is a modification I'm gonna quickly do to one of the decks. Basically, I've been playing that during the deck building phase between turns, I can place any basic card into my deck. But that's not exactly the rules. I've been playing it wrong all the time. What you have to do is, you can only place in basic cards if you are unable to make a legal deck with the card pool you have. So you can't just choose basic cards. They get chucked out as always. So what I'm actually gonna do is, if you remember, I chose just to try it out to use this Javelin, which is a basic card, into Adwin's deck. This is the, but I actually decided not to take a heavy crossbow. So I'm going to give her the heavy crossbow back. And I'm pretty sure that is the only example of that that I have to worry about. I'll, uh, from now on, I will, I'll be doing it correctly. But yeah, so basically during the deck building phase, you can only add basic cards if you're unable to create a legal deck using the card pool you've got, which is a huge difference. Okay. Uh, let's build the scenario now. And you blemo, you bonk. Now I've done all the uh, the law stuff. So all I'm going to do here is go through some of the other things. Basically, I might have to put this into the mod, but I we need the cult of the Baphomet. We need a tree. We need a guardsman, and we need a right or right thought how that's pronounced. So I'm just going to put these over here in the spawnable locations. Now I can spawn them when I required. Also, let's have a quick look at the Wardstones, which I actually forgot to read out the Wardstone thing, so I'll do it here. Crusaders of Amade patrol the world wound guarding the magic Wardstones that hold the Abyssal Hordes at bay. As the Wardstones begin to crumble, valiant defenders such as the Bave Sir Ilvan are the last line of defense. Will there be enough to turn the demonic hordes? Who knows? But the answer is yes. Now, basically, this is the power of the card. If you fail a check to defeat a Bane, you may recharge a card that has the soldier or hireling trait to re-roll the die and take a new result. Okay, so basically we fail a Bane, we can re-roll if, if we recharge a soldier or the hireling. Pretty cool. But the thing is, I don't know how many of them I've got in my decks. Also, when you play the cohort to Evelyn on a check to defeat a monster, examine the top card of the Blessing deck. If it has the Corrupted trait, banish Sir Evelyn and summon and encounter the Corrupted Soldier. So basically, this is our guy. 
Now he's got some pretty good powers. You can reveal this card to add one D8 to check to defeat a Bane with the outsider trait. That's basically outsiders, basically demons sort of things. And you can bury it to add two D8 to the check to defeat a Bane that has the outsider trait. So that's pretty cool. So you can get a 1d8 or even 2d8s if you want to bury him. And during your give card step, which is part of the part of your normal turn, you can actually reveal this card to give it to another character at any location. So he can like jump around, which is pretty cool. The only problem is, as it says up here, if you you know reveal the if you reveal the uh, the blessing and it has corrupted, which this one isn't, then he is discarded, which is not good. Okay, so let's just shuffle that again. Okay, so we're going to give him to uh, our healer over here because she's the one that is in the most dire straits for combat. And everybody else is pretty much ready to go. Uh, what do we need here? We need four cards. One, two, three, four. He has five. One, two, three, four, five. He has four. One, two, three, four. We have, what have we got? Five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five. Now, also something that I kind of haven't been doing is if you look over here, everyone has a favored card type. And if you don't draw that in your opening hand, you have to redraw. So I have no weapon. So let's... Uh, Discard that. One, two, three, four. Okay, we've got a weapon. So he also has to have a weapon. Let's discard that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we've got weapons that time. She has to have a blessing, which she does. She has to have a blessing, which she does. She has to have a spell, which she does. And she has to have an ally, which she doesn't. So let's just do that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we've got an ally that time. And he does have the soldier trait. Now remember, we can use him to re-roll, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so uh, now we just got to set up our locations. So if we have a quick look at these locations, there's some good ones here. For starters, we've got the guard post. We saw how well uh, Crow crushed the guard post last time, but he doesn't have his super powerful weapon in hand right now. But he does have the quarter staff, which is still pretty good. And he's got the Sage's Journal, which is giving him a D4 each time. So he's actually not that bad. I'd like to send him back there because he likes crushing corrupted guards' skulls. Also, we have the Cathedral. This is an interesting one. This one has four blessings. Massive amount of blessings. It's got no barriers and it's got one monster. So basically, the Cathedral is an awesome place to go. And we're going to send our little Kyra girl here. And she's actually going to use this card here. You can actually do this. Discard this card to get a mythic charge. And then if you ever have a mythic charge, every time you draw a blessing or one of these types of blessings, you automatically acquire it. So that should mean that she should be able to burn through this deck, just pick up these things really quick. So that's the plan for her. Now, everyone else is a bit of a crapshoot. We're going to be trying to use, trying to dig out of the deck uh, Alan's lance as quickly as possible and sort of uh, leverage his cohort and his uh, horse trait, you know, mount trait cards and use his, his peaking, use the peaking power of learn. So basically display this card to examine the top card of your deck. So the way this works is that you've got to display the card and then on your turn you discard it and on the next turn you can pull it out of your discard pile by using this power. So I've been giving her, because we, we are going to be playing with this cohort. If the current scenario lists cohorts, treat this cohort as if it were on the list. So I like to give that to her as well, because she can keep digging it out. Anyway, so where to put her though is the question. So this guy, to close this, you just need to defeat a cultist. It has two monsters, one barrier, and a bunch of blessings. So that's pretty cool. Caravan. This one has a whole heap of monsters, and it's a strength check five to defeat, and two barriers. So I think... Why don't we send Alan there? 
He hasn't got many powers on his first thing, though. Let's send Alan there, though. Does this have a move location? If you move from this location, move to a random other location. That's not very cool, is it? I might leave that one blank just until we've got some better... Just until Alan's got his uh, big lance in hand. Family Tomb, this is really easy. we just got to kill a right. Now, the right is uh, Combat 10, which isn't too hard, but it deals one unavoidable cold damage whenever you see it. And you bury cards instead of discarding them, which is horrible. So let's uh, send him there to the Family Tomb. Okay, so the Wounded Lands, we've been here before. This one requires a survival check, and she has our best survival. She's got survival uh, D8-3. I think that's our best survival. Two monsters, three barriers. It's a pretty harsh place to go, though. I'd rather not go there if I can avoid it. What about the canyon? When you encounter a non-henchman, not this has three monsters and three barriers. That's a horrible place. Good for skull crushing though. And to close this, you have to acquire the bottom of the blessing deck, which is actually pretty difficult. Okay, I think I'll send... Yeah, I'll send uh, Shali over to the cavern. You just have to do a strength check of five. She is already a... She's got a D8. So the question is, where are we going to send our spellcaster? Feed a cultist, acquire a weapon. Oh, here we are, acquire a weapon. It's got four weapons, one ally, and four armors. There's nothing in here at all. So basically, you just pull a character out of the thing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have Alan go bam, 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 bam. Which means that she can do this one here. If you fail to check to defeat a monster, discard a card from the Blessings deck. Wow, that's harsh. Yeah, I think I'll send her to... I think I'll send her to the Family Tomb and... Spell 0. Spell 2. Spell 0. Spell 2. Spell 1. Spell 0. Spell 0. Yeah, I'm going to leave her at the Profound Altar. Maybe she'll get some spells. Okay, so that is the setup for the first round. And I will see you guys next time. Oh, I just want to apologize for the kind of jerkiness in this video. I was testing a new rendering system where I'm rendering and capturing off my network drive because I just installed this new service system. But my workstation is just, it's just too slow because uh, I'm using Wi-Fi and I can't be bothered wiring up the whole house. So uh, the, the recording was a little bit, was losing frames. So there's nothing I can do about that. I'm going to switch back to just doing the recording locally and it should be back to being smooth. Okay, see you guys next time.